Hi guys, thought I'd do an update. I'm sort of hiding upstairs. The uh, kids are downstairs. Well, we'll be downstairs with his, his mate on the VRs. Um, bro, so they, they were going to be there all afternoon. So every Saturday and Sunday they do um, some training. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's mixed martial arts or they, they do do something every weekend. Um, so after that, they normally end up on the VR till uh, um, Ubi's mate goes home at some point. <laughs> yeah, they seem to seem to live here most of the time. <laughs> um, yeah, conservatory. They they were waiting on some paint, um, so I'm still waiting on that. So yeah, hence I'm sitting up here rather than actually um, sitting in the conservatory today. Although. On a plus note, um, the electrics out the front. There was a problem with the mains box for not just here. There's um, a few rows of the houses, and I assume others have got the same issue. Um, where they've probably been there since the 80s and had no maintenance and um, just in a very poor state. So. They've all been sort of rewired, redone, got them to redo the box in the house because you know what I was saying before in Spain, everything gets wired into one switch. So he's separated them out. He's tidied the cables up on the, the street side. Also, he says the contactor was only one third in, um, which also explains another issue. Um, but since he's tidied that up, we've pretty much been able to switch all the electrics on at the same time. Um, if you live in Spain, you'll you'll know what 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 an issue that is sometimes when you your hot water's on and you can't boil the tea because as soon as you switch the kettle on, it switches the switches the boiler um switches the electrics off. Um, but everything's running. We had the hot water, two aircon. What else do we have on? Uh, all the kids' heaters because so he's got an oil filled radiator. Um, hope he's got a uh, small heater that he uses and the bathroom heater was on and yeah some other stuff and it was all running normally two air cons and the water heater is enough to trip it out so it's at least double the capacity it was before so all good but it also meant because it trips out April's a bit more frugal with the electrics on what's switched on which keeps the electric bill out um, so that's all good like I said the conservatory is still waiting on I was going to start the sockets today, but then I thought, you know what, I'm actually going to just enjoy the weekend. So yesterday we went out shopping, got some uh, nice new boots and stuff. Because uh, Ubi's getting a bit older now, so it's uh, a bit more fashion conscious. So new coat from Zara and some new expensive leather boots. Um, to be fair, I got I got the same because. Uh, had a nice sale on. Still, still, still seems to get through the money. Just seem to buy more. Um, yeah, it's the day yesterday. And today we're down at Murphy's. Um, bumped into somebody from the channel. Big hello. Um, it's, uh, like I said, if you do see us, just give us a shout. Just bear in mind, I won't know who you are. Because the channel's off and only one way. So uh, try not to ask people either as well, unless they want to make themselves known. Um, because sometimes people use pseudonyms and other things. So unless you introduce yourself, I generally don't ask. Um, just just out of a courtesy type thing. Um, so yeah, I went to Murphy's this, for Sunday lunch. Really good. Um, they do a nice Sunday dinner there, and it's just. Along the front, as you come in from the matter side, if you go along the seafront, um, where you're coming in um, from from the coastal road, you, you'll see Murphy's on the right hand side, where they've got the the sort of pastel coloured um, rails along the seafront. Um, yeah, recommend just dropping in there for a Sunday lunch, and my son likes the burgers there, so uh, that's a nice little place to drop into. Um, but yeah, it was nice to get out today. Nice to just do family stuff without 
thinking about work, thinking about fixing the house, although we still do. And you may have seen our new plan, I'll stick it on the channel. Um, yeah, I still managed to find a, another plant while I was out. It won't survive in the conservatory, it's going to be upstairs, but yeah, I love my plants. Um, it's sort of been less chaotic this year. Um, I mean, this is a, this is what's a bit weird at the minute because, to be fair, I'm sick and tired of the negative media. We've just come through this whole COVID scenario, and everything's doom and gloom. The living crisis, housing crisis, everything's in crisis. When do they have a decent news story that's on a positive spin? Um, it's frustrating because I know. Um, so, for example, when I'm in the Philippines, um, when Manny Pacquiao was fighting, the whole country got behind it. It's all very positive. It's all like, and those guys have got something to grumble about in a bigger way. UK, I've been saying for a long, long time, there's too much debt stacked in the housing market, and it's those those problems are coming home to roost now. Now, it's why I didn't buy in the UK. It's why. Here in Spain, you know, you go, well, you probably lose money in your house here. It's my home. So the point is, it doesn't matter. You know, it's it's your home. It's when people have over-invested in it. And this is when the houses have moved from, like, say, three times your annual pay to ten times. You're setting people up to fail. And now I see enough of it in work where people won't train people or overload them knowing that they're probably only going to last six months and there'll be somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. Never fixes the problem. Rather in investing in two or three people initially to get everything where somebody can manage it, it's just this constant revolving door. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't fix it. it. And this is the problem. The debt has continue to go and go up and go up you think well how do you level it off why do you think you've got this living crisis at the minute because that debt the easiest way for government to pay for it is to devalue money devaluing money hits you on that property because um, I, you've got to put it onto some like a tangible asset let's just say the cost of gold how many gold bars did it buy to in comparison to the house because when the markets move the gold bar value will probably not move that much but the point being is you'll find it's worth less gold bars but still cost the same but everything you buy the cost goes up so for example the fuel that goes in your car new car your wages remain stagnant that's how you push this um, debt down for the government you devalue everything but at the same time you work harder you work longer to stay where you are never mind move forward doom and gloom <laughs> but the point being is that's just that's just life unfortunately it's when things have all got out of control since the 80s and just carried on um hence I bought in Spain and we bought in the Philippines. The land in the Philippines continues to go up in value with doing absolutely nothing to it. The land here, we've got a beachfront house. If it devalues now, it'll be worth more than we paid for it in probably five years' time. Because let's let's be honest, any of this recession stuff is probably a two-year um, rewind. Um, I can't see it being a Great Depression or any other stuff that um, they talk about because the economics are very different to when those things occurred before um, and I'm not going to go into it in great detail but but the reality is the, the world's changed since those days and how like the uh, IMF and other people operate there's there's I wouldn't even call them safety nets I'm, I'll just say it's controlled um, good or bad it's controlled um, but anyway that's enough for that um, would I still recommend moving to Spain? Yeah, of 
course I would. I mean, I see a lot of people sort of putting things off. One of the things I'll say in life is there's always something going to come along. There's always something changing. There's always something going to upset the apple cart. Um, you've just got to make an informed decision. It may, may end up to be wrong. It, it may end up being an issue. But at the end of the day, if you make no decision, you're stuck where you are. Um, now, the other side of this being that um, even myself, you know, I'm looking at cars. So, obviously, I've got a diesel car. Um, Spain started introducing these new um, labels, the same as the UK has, low emission zones, all that sort of stuff. And they're rolling this um, program out across Spain, same as the UK. Um, and they've also got these little flashing beacons, which is quite funny because they've already had another version. These other ones are connected. Um, I'm not I'm not interested on how it's connected, but I think if you activate it, it's connected to say that your car's broke down or whatever. Um, and it says you know, you must replace them by 2026. That this is the whole point because we were looking at them in uh, media market uh, yesterday. And they said, you know, media, you know, they're going, oh, yeah, you should have this, da da da. By 2026, you know, go have this version. The old version is no good anymore. And I said to April, I'll get one nearer 2026 because they've probably changed it again since then anyway. This is one of the problems with dealing with governments, is they chop and change all the time. Um, you just got to accept it is what it is. You need to make decisions on your life and your choices and how you want to progress things. I'm very different when I'm in Spain. Now, I was talking to Stephen the other day about this, and he mentioned it. He said how relaxed you are when you're in Spain. In the UK, I find people are far more frustrated, argumentative, um, can be a lot more rude. Um, in Spain, you generally don't get it too much. I mean, I did have somebody on Saturday that... It just frustrates me when people stand in doorways, you know, because the... The guy was standing in his, the doorway anyway, he's in the queue, so he's sort of half in the door, half out. Then his wife sort of come along with a push chair. I thought, I'll let her in. Goes in, stops in the doorway, and starts having a conversation. So it's like, oh, for God's sake, I'm trying to get past him. <laughs> you know, I want to go, I'm not there, I'm not in the queue, I'm trying to get past him. So she then goes, and then there guy's leaning across the door. I was like, what are you doing? Um, but... It's just some people are like that, you know. But I do find in the UK is a lot more people seem a lot more agitated, and to be fair, I can understand it. I mean, I stop in a shared house when I'm in the UK because rent a, just rent a room, um, and you'll get people that are irritable by all the people in the house. Um, and myself, I sort of switch off, trying to avoid using the kitchen and all that sort of stuff. Just keep to my room as if I don't use any other parts of the house as much as possible. But there's, there's an individual there that likes to wind other people up because he's, I don't know, this is, he's always doing something, he's always messing around. And a few people have moved out and moved on. Myself, I just ignore him. Now, if I was more inclined to be bothered by him, um, I'm sure would have ended up coming to blows at some time. But, but the reality is, you just ignore him. His biggest issue is, he wants somebody to talk to him. He's, he's there all day, he ain't got much going on. That's him, so he just likes winding everyone else up because he, he wants to talk to people and other people are busy, bizarrely. Um, so he, he sort of messes around with stuff and like he, he like, say you forgot your keys, it wouldn't answer the door. You'd do it on purpose. Um, but that's just him. Other people, though, you know, you find a lot of people seem a bit more agitated. But also, it becomes a bit of... When you see it, try and do the opposite. I mean, it was really weird. Um, I was in Tesco's a week ago, and... Um, 
I noticed this woman had, I think it was uh, some mango juice. She had two, had a fair bit of shopping. So I said, just go in front. You know, you know, go in front of me. I've only got a couple of items. Don't worry about it. And she started a conversation because she was so surprised and shocked that somebody actually let her go in front. I'm like, it's you know, it's just a bit of courtesy. You know, why, yeah, I've got about thirty items. You got two. She says, oh yeah, my, I got home and the kid said, oh, have you got this? And I hadn't got it. So I've had to rush all the way back. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. But shows you can put the positivity in it as well. Because that probably made her a day. Um, just doing those small things. Because a lot of time, like I said, a lot of people are agitated. A lot of people, I don't know. I, I don't get it sometimes, you know. Um... It's, it's strange because the problem is I because I've spent a lot of time even before Spain I was in the Philippines and a lot of people have got nothing but you know what they don't whine about it don't complain about it they just get on with life it life it is what it is you move on you get on with you focus on the positive stuff because we know things are crap <laughs> you know that's one of those things um, and in Spain I find people are just going through day to day but you find generally people are pretty pretty laid back pretty chilled happy with just day-to-day -day life they're not excessively buying from you know where we are anyway you know a lot of these properties haven't had anything invested significantly in them since they were built um, and the reality is they didn't need to but you, all, you also see there's a lot of um, people out there they don't invest in them either you know in the sense even if you go to um their main houses a lot of these are coastal houses you know in the sense of second homes in their main homes they may not spend a lot of money on them either because it's not it's not driven by uh consumerism it's just driven by need and that's i first seen it when i lived in germany a long time ago but a lot of the Germans had very nice houses and seem to buy it once and they keep it forever. Um, where I find in the UK, we're often buying on fads and buying the latest one and, you know, and at the same time complaining we have too much debt and all the other things that are associated with it. Uh, my point being is don't let things wind you up and if, it, if you are sort of dropping into that maybe it's a case of just reevaluating your finances and how you're dealing with things in like like i did last year i hammered the mortgage down um put a lot of money on it and my interest on my mortgage is doubled but bizarrely it's exactly as much as it was last year um, so I haven't sort of had this massive increase where people go, my mortgage is doubled and my mortgage is this. Yeah, mine's doubled, but I paid that much off on it. Um, it's back where I started, you know, monthly wise. But this year again, I'm going to hammer it again. So by the end of the year, there won't be much of it left. Um, but sometimes you've got to assess what you're spending is it your fault? Is it somebody else's fault? And just go, okay, what can I do about it? No point complaining. Um, I'll say I'm sort of chilling out this weekend. My eyes are a bit sore today. I don't know why, actually. Um, I had a nap on the sofa earlier because after Sunday lunch, I had a couple of beers and went to sleep on the sofa. Something I haven't done for... I can't even remember the last time I did that. Um... But it was nice to actually just not have any work stuff or anything else, but just chilling out. Um, uh, yeah. So it's all good. All good. Yeah. Like I said, the economies are moving in a negative way, but let's be honest, they've been saying it since 2008. I mean, and obviously we had these various crises. There was the end of the world, but everything sort of sorted out in the end I didn't say sort itself out but sorted out in the end um, we'll see what tomorrow brings but 
I think uh, from our side, I think financially, we we'll probably must be paid up on this. The well, the majority of it paid up by the end of the year, if not all. Conservatory, I'm hoping it'll be on by the end of February. It's supposed to be the end of Jan, but we're on uh, Spanish time by the looks of it. Um, as long as that's done, we're in a good space. Because then I've got my work office. I've got my work office. I can start working my way out in other directions. Because um, I'm starting to get office for some private contract stuff on top of my day job. I do that. I can double my income in a week. Um, which makes life much easier. I mean, to be fair, I'd probably set up a consultancy and leave the money in there. Um, because I, I don't really pay myself because I pay too much tax. I have to find a better way of doing that. I don't see why I should pay tax twice if I'm working twice as hard because I don't use the health service because I'm private. The only thing I'm doing is getting taxed to death for nothing. Uh, but anyway, guys, I'll catch you later. Take it easy.